Recently, I built this 3D printed ATST. This model is made from free STL files, but the best part is it's fully articulated. After watching the video, be sure to get the link to the free STL files. Hey everyone, Danny here with Vader Dad Builds. In this video, I'll be doing a build and review of this fully articulated ATST. This is a very difficult print, but a fun build, and I definitely recommend this for any Star Wars fan. I'll be providing some tips to help you avoid some of the issues that I run into. All right, so let's get started. This build has 16 parts that I printed in PLA as well as some bushings that needed to be printed in TPU. The 16 PLA parts took almost 40 hours to print on my Ender 3 Max Neo, and they totaled 210 grams of filament. Besides the feet and bushings, every part needed supports. The leg parts didn't have any large flat areas to make a good first layer, so I used a raft on one leg and a brim for the other. I prefer using rafts over brims since the brim can be more difficult to separate cleanly from the print but both take extra time and material, so I avoid using either when I can. For this print, I had to do something I haven't done before, which is printing TPU. I won't go too much into the details, but I'll give you some of the settings I used to get this print going. I wasn't sure how it was going to be to print the TPU bushings. This was my first time printing this material. Luckily, these were small pieces, and by changing a few settings in my slicer, it ended up being pretty easy to print. I started with 210 degrees for the hot end, printing at 15 millimeters a second, and I made sure to enable retraction and retraction at layer changes. TPU bends very easily when compared to PLA. If you're using a Bowden tube, you want to make sure it's flowing freely through the nozzle, or else it'll get stuck and just start to bend as you can see here. When I started the print, I noticed these lines going from one piece to the other. I wanted to avoid stringing, so I lowered the temperature from 210 degrees to the minimum for this TPU, which was 200 degrees. It looks like that did the trick because other than the first layer, there was no stringing. For the printing, I rated a 5 out of 10. Let me show you the biggest issues I ran into. On the head, you can see the rails. They are very thin, and as this piece gets longer without support, the part starts to move and bend slightly when the print head goes across it. You can slow the printer down to help with this issue, but I'll get back to this part later. The left gun was the most difficult to print. You can see there's plenty of string in there and all these little skinny pieces going straight up. This is better for a resin printer. Um, and there was also an issue with the file that I had to fix. I'll show you that right now too. You can see this gun is not attached to anything and is just floating there. I modified the file by adding a cylinder to support it. Now that the printing is done, I start to remove the supports. I just need to be careful not to break some of the smaller detailed parts when breaking the supports from the print. After removing the supports, I use a file to get the joints on the legs a bit smoother. They were tight fits, especially with the knee joints. Now I'm starting to assemble the legs. There are four parts that make up each leg. In the STL files, they are labeled thigh, leg A, leg B, and leg C. First I attach the thigh to leg C. And then I connect them with a thigh bushing. Next I'm connecting leg B to leg C at the knee. Now I place and screw on the TPU printed kneecap. You need to make sure to get this kneecap screwed on tightly since this joint will need to hold up the head and body. And now I'm putting together the same three parts for the other leg. To attach the part leg A, I am adding two leg bushings and two ankle bushings. It's a tight fit as I attach leg A to leg B. Then I use a 12mm M3 machine screw and nut to tighten. Again, you will want this pretty tight to hold everything up. And now I'm attaching the foot and tightening with another machine screw and nut. Then I do the same to finish the other leg. Alright, so now that the legs are done, I will be assembling the head and body. There is a side gun bushing for each side. After I put those in place, I attach the left and right guns. There are two bushings for the front gun as well. 
I push them in partially into the gun. Then once I place the gun, I push the bushings in the rest of the way to hold everything in place. The neck bushing wasn't very flexible at the ends, and I figured it'd be difficult to place it in. So I modified the file to make it much more flexible. You can see me struggle even with the modified file. I don't think the original would have worked for me. But this modified file worked pretty good. Now I'm going to attach the legs to the body. I attach the thigh to the body and connect them with a the thigh bushing. And now the same for the other leg. As I mentioned earlier, you want the leg joints to be tight. You don't want it to fall and break any parts, especially when filming a YouTube video. Sorry, just give me a second. I need to print the left gun again. All right, now let's tighten those legs a little bit better. As I mentioned before, the joints here, here, and here at the knee need to be very tight because they hold up the body. As you noticed, I'm going to tighten the two screws on this leg. And now flip it over to get the other two screws. You want to get the joints as tight as possible while still being able to move them. For the knees, it's difficult to get them tight enough using just your hands, so I'm going to use pliers. I'll go ahead and tighten this knee and do the same for the other one. All right, now it stands much better. For the assembly, I give this one an 8 out of 10. This one definitely was fun to build. And before I get back to that rail at the top of the head, I want to give credit to the people that made these files. Now, most of the credit goes to Joe Johnston from ILM, who made the original ATST Walker for The Empire Strikes Back. But this STL file was made by Jace1969 and then remixed by Ian Folds to make it poseable. The links to these files are in the description. All right, so back to that rail at the top of the head. Like I mentioned before, when you see this happening, what you can do is you can slow down the printer. But with the time lapse camera I was using, I wasn't able to change the speed mid print. So what I did instead was just reprint the rail. I clip off the original rail. You can see the replacement looks much better. I apply some super glue gel to the rail and then put it in place. For the final model, I give this one a 10 out of 10. Yes, it was difficult to print, but it was well worth it. I mean, there's lots of detail, the guns move, the legs, the head. I definitely recommend making this one. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button and check out this video next. Thank you for watching.